And we back. All right, I'm still dealing with my cold, but it, the show must go on, ladies and gentlemen. The Phoenix Suns just got embarrassed on national TV. At one point, they were down by 46 points to Luka Doncic and Spencer Dinwiddie. This is a team that won 60 plus games, getting eliminated in the second round. Finals appearance last year, second round exit this year. That's reverse progression, ladies and gentlemen. My job is to get the Phoenix Suns to the championship. Actually, deeper than that. These boys got embarrassed so bad. One championship don't make up for it. We need at least three of them. Okay, let's say let's say two. Can we say two? Let's let's go two championships for the Phoenix Suns. Now, if you want to hear my full opinions about the end of this series, the end of the Boston series, I have another channel named Kenny for Real. Today we just hit half a million subscribers. I just woke up to half a million, so we celebrate. Go subscribe. Uh, it's just it's just the beginning, man. All right, as you can see, we just lost this game, and now we're going to see this conference finals: three seed versus four seed, one seed versus two seed, and in a seven game series versus Luka Doncic, um, Jason Tatum prevailed. In this game with 23, 10, and 7. Having a cold sucks. But when you a YouTuber and you rely on your voice, it's like, it's it's the, it's the worst thing imaginable. But one point win in a game 7 is crazy. That's something we want in real life. I don't care who win the finals. For real, for real. Because the Bulls aren't there. I want something like this. 7 game and it's down to the last shot. That This is what we need. So you look at the roster. You try to figure out what the heck you need to do to, to turn this team from not just a really good regular season team. But a team that can win a championship. Book is safe. Though Chris Paul did not have a good series in the second round, I would say he's safe because he's my favorite of all time, and I do want him to get a championship. DeAndre Ayton is up for an extension, and he wants a max contract. So I, I'm thinking that we might do a little signy signing trade. I don't know who it's for just yet, but a little signy signing trade. There's got to be teams out there that's interested, of course. Um, so we match anything that he gets and then we trade him away after. Mikhail's contract kicks in this year. I think it's like 21 M's. 21 M's, 21, then 23, then 24. Cam Johnson is up for some money too is that we got we to figure out how we do that. Jay Crowder's on the last year for his deal. JaVale McGee's a free agent. Dario Sarch, who hasn't played in over a season, is here. Probably some salary filler that we could throw in for a potential trade. And I think we need another shot creator. In the last couple games of their series, um, they started throwing double teams at, at, at Devin Booker. And nobody else on the team can create their own shot. So it's like, we need somebody else. They don't have to be like elite. I'm not asking to get Kevin Durant. But like, even if it's a tier three shot creator, that's better than what the heck we got already. And of course, I'm speaking in wheeze because I'm the general manager here. I went to go ahead and put on my Phoenix Suns shirt. So let's get it. Cam Johnson, throw him that player option, of course. I think that we can get away with not having to extend him just yet. I think we can wait until next season to do that. DeAndre Aiden is here in free agency. He's got nine offers, and one of them is for the Spurs for four years, $122 million. Hold on. Let me go ahead and get my calculator out because that's a ton of, that's a ton of money, Spurs. The Spurs out here trying to work, and I, I respect it for sure. Like, if I had money and restricted free agency this season, I would throw a bag at DeAndre Aiden. I know the way it ended was not great at all. Um, but I'm still a firm believer in his progression. I just don't know for this video if his progression is here in Phoenix. I think that he could go to another team and, be, and blossom into an all-star. That's $30 million a year. Jeez. The Pistons also offered him that. You got some other teams offering him basically nothing. And they're recommended that I turn it down. 2K is like, hey, he not worth 122 amps. But I, I, I think we can make it work. I was going to offer him the money anyway. I was going to offer him the money anyway, anyway easily. All right, now that he's on the team, let's go trade him away. <laughs> let's go trade him away. So, as I, oh my God, Zach Levine went to the Wizards. And they got Jalen Brunson. Wow, so they they did pretty good in free agency. Um, I'm looking around the league, trying to figure out what team could use him. Um, the Trailblazers could use him, but what are they giving me? You know, I'm still trying to be a championship team here. We don't got that. Nothing with the Timberwolves. OKC's interested, but they don't have anything that can help us win a championship. Even though him with Shea and then Giddy and Dort would be kind of nice for them. Um, the Spurs are the team that initially offered him the contract, and I guess Jacopoto can come back, but it's going to be like, Jacopoto and what? There's no and what? They're, they're probably not giving me Kelvin Johnson in this trade, so it's like, it's not worth it. Houston got Paolo Benchero, shout out to him, um, but they don't have anything I would want either. The Raptors have Pascal Siakam, which is interesting. Um, that would be another shot creator on the team. Say what you want about Pascal, he could definitely create his own shot and create for others. We saw that um, this season. Why would the Raptors do it, though? Um, timelines. Timelines. Pascal's 28 years old. DeAndre Ayton is 23. 23-year-old him. 25-year-old Ozean Anobi. 20-year-old Scotty Barnes. 23-year-old Gary Trent Jr. I, I mean, I know they got Freddie here, but that, that's okay. Are we, are we looking at this as a potential sign-and-trade situation? We bring Pascal in to be the four, 
And then we go out there to get another center. I don't know who that center is just yet. Did I mention earlier that this is not all in a world of complete realism? Okay, cool. What would you say to this trade? They want Tory Craig and they'll give me a first round pick. That that doesn't feel right. You can have Tory Craig for sure, but I don't. I feel like you shouldn't be throwing me no first round pick. But okay, we know that this trade is here. Let's go keep, keep looking around the league, man. We know that the Raptors trade is here, but maybe there's something out there that's different. The Pistons... I mean, like, Jeremy Grant is an interesting person for us, but he will be on the last year of his deal. You don't want to trade away 23-year-old DeAndre Ayton on a four-year deal for a one-year rental. That just doesn't make a lot of sense. The Pelicans have one-year rental of Jonas Valanciunas, but that's that's a bad trade. The Pacers have, like, Malcolm Brogdon and Miles Turner that can add some, some depth. But I'm looking at Malcolm Brogdon. I think he's going to probably regress this season going into his year uh, year 30 or his age 30 year. And I just don't see that as a real thing. Uh, the Mavericks are doing okay by themselves. They don't really need DeAndre Aiden. Bradley Beal signed to the Orlando Magic. Wow, that's that's extremely interesting, but not, not nothing there. Anthony Davis is another player. Uh, but I, I think I'm good. I think I'm good on it. I think I'm good. But I mean, listen, if they're like obviously not hitting the reset, but trying to save just a little bit of money. Uh, they're, they're saving about $9 million in cap. And now you got DeAndre Aiden next year with Braun. And now you got Russell Westbrook's contracts gone. And now you can maybe sign the next player. I don't like that trade for us personally. So I'll keep it moving. But I think it's a possibility. The Knicks don't have anything that I would want. The King. Okay. I don't know if there's going to be any other team. Oh, the Hornets. Now I know double little sign and trade. I think Miles Bridges is safe over there. So we looking at like. Gordon Hayward, Kelly Oubre, and like PJ Washington. I'll pass on that. All right, I'm going to go to the Raptors and, and offer the Raptors this trade again. They're going to offer me this. They want to give me a first round pick. I took away the first round pick and they're like, nah, we desperately want to give you the pick. I mean, okay. I, I mean, I guess I'll take it, but I, I don't think it makes sense for you to be throwing in a first round pick. But I, I mean, hey, thanks, I guess. Deal is done. Pascal Siakam, welcome to Phoenix. I hope you like hot weather. It's a lot different than Toronto, that's for sure. Um, but now we got Pascal Siakam, and now we got to figure out our center position. Now, if you look at the rest of our roster, we got a lot of money tied into some players like Jay Crowder, Landry Shaman, Dar Dario Sarge, Cameron Payne. I think we need a better backup point guard than Cameron Payne. So if I do Landry Shaman and I do Dario Sarge, that's about $18 million in cap. There's going to be a center out there that's on a team that's looking to just dump is the wrong word, but like, there's got there's gonna be a center out there that we can snag with that cap. What if it still is Miles? I'll give I'll give them Dario on the last year of his deal, and I'll give them the younger Landry Shamit. Contractually, this makes sense already. But I feel like if the the Pacers were to do a trade where they're giving up Miles, they would want some pick equity in return. So I'll give them that Toronto pick that we just got in the Pascal trade, and we got a deal. So the new starting lineup would look like Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Ma uh, Mikael Bridges, Pascal Siakam. And then Miles Turner. I, I like that a lot. I'm going to make Cam Johnson a small four here. We're going to have to pay Cam next season. I'm okay with that. I'm guessing it's going to be like $15 million a year, somewhere around that. I think he's worth that. Anything more than that is a bit iffy, and we got to figure out what the heck we want to do. But like now we need to go sign a backup shooting guard and a backup center. I hacked it off season for sure, but the new additions make it look so good. I think we need another shot creator on our bench, but I think that's something that we can get at the deadline. I signed Josh Richardson for like a $4 million deal with a, with a player option or a team option after that. I also brought in Dwayne Detman and played some backup center minutes. Um, Cameron Payne is a backup point guard I don't love anymore, which is crazy because it felt like last season, he's one of the best in the league when it comes to backup point guard. But now this year, you know, after he basically was unplayable in the playoffs, which is unfortunate for him. Pascal Siakam already making things work. Uh, Chris Paul with a 15-6 assist game. I like the Pascal Siakam addition just because it takes the pressure off of Chris Paul quite a bit. Now he could just be a point guard and just play make and get get worse because he's already <laughs> he's already starting to regress. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead and get old and, and washed up if you want to do that. Because uh, as long as you play making, we, we good. Deadline duties, ladies and gentlemen, we got to go ahead and make a trade. We have the best team in the Western Conference, at least. I don't know what's going on now. East, let's go check it out. Oh, the Raptors are like the best team in the league. Look at that. That's what we call a win-win trade. Fred Van Vliet. Yeah, this is a really, 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 really good team. DeAndre Ayton jumped up to an 87. That's, that's a dub. You know what I'm saying? That's what we expected of him. We're happy that he's on to the next team and doing great things. We might see y'all in the finals, maybe. We'll see. Anyway, my job is to make our team better, just in case we do see them in the finals. I'm looking for selling and rebuilding teams and who we can take off of them. Dante DiVincenzo's here for 210. I'll add him to my list. 
Dante could, could do a little sum sum on our team for sure. They don't have a ton of things that I would want anyway, but they, they're selling. Uh, Kobe White is interesting, but you're going to have to extend them after this year. Alex Caruso for sure. I'll add him to my list, I guess. If they're going to be selling, Alex Caruso is a dude that could come in and hoop hoop for you. Uh, the Hornets are selling. Like I said, I'm, I'm just looking for shot creators, bro. People that can create their own shot and help other people uh, get, get their shots off. So um, all of these selling teams... I mean, one of the reasons why they sell is probably because they don't have players like that. So it's, it's not a ton out there. Dante DiVincenzo is making about $9 million a year. In order to make that work, we'd have to throw them Josh Richardson. And we'd have to throw them Contavious Caldwell Pope. Financially, this makes sense already. Um, so far this season, how are you even playing? I ain't even really looking at that. 11 points per game, 4 rebounds, 2.5 assists. He's having a good year. He's definitely having a good year. Um, an up year compared to last season. They're saying no, but guess what? I got a 2024 second round pick. That's not very interesting to you. Okay, we could come back to Dante DiVincenzo. Um, the next player that we had on our list was Alice Caruso. He's averaging eight, five, and three. We know he's a defensive monster, and we could use that here, man. We could use some more Hooper Hoopers. They want Jay Crowder and a first. That's not something we're actually super interested in. Even though, actually, maybe we should be. Jay Crowder's 80 overall, and he's having, he's having a really good season, but this is last, yeah, last year of his deal. And if I'm paying Cam Johnson after the season, we're not paying Jay Crowder unless Jay Crowder wants three amps. You know what I'm saying? Which I don't know how likely that is. But Caruso is under contract for a couple seasons, so I feel confident or comfortable doing this trade right here. Um, they got to give us back a player. That, that changes things up a little bit. Uh, you, you could give us back Marco Shamanich, but even there, like the contracts don't make sense. Oh, who's the cheapest player on the team that we can actually trade for? It's it's Shamanich. Oh no, it's Malcolm Hill. Okay, they want Juan to Scott Anderson. They'll give us Javante Green. That's basically nothing exchange. So boom, Alex Caruso, welcome to Phoenix. I like that trade a ton, Alex Caruso. Now we ain't got to rely on Cameron Payne, who's not having a terrible season, but he can't shoot. Uh, we don't have to rely on Cameron Payne was playoff time come around. We take away Cameron Payne minutes and let Alex Russo be the backup point guard, shooting guard. That trade helps us a ton, I think. And though it's, it might not be the shot creator I was looking for, it definitely just helps us increase our odds of winning the championship. Luka wins MVP. I hope we see you in the playoffs, Luka. I'll be honest with you. You made us look crazy last season. We're new and improved. I, Spencer Denver, he won six man of the year. We're new and improved. I feel like we could beat you this time around. Most improved with the Scotty Barnes. Nick Nurse won Coach of the Year. Yeah, we helped them out a ton. I love I love a good win-win trade. Nothing is better than a win-win trade, in my personal opinion. And I think that was one. Fred Van Vliet is the NBA player for them. They're the one seed. We're the one seed. You know what I'm saying? So I feel good. Uh, they Oh, my God. They were the best team in basketball. Oh. And it wasn't even... All right. We'll see. We'll see, y'all. We'll see, y'all. You know what I'm saying? You got to beat us in seven. Oh, first round matchup. The repeat. I'm here for this. They lost Jalen Brunson, though. So that's probably... Oh, they won game one. I was going to say that's probably their downfall. And it probably is low-key. 3-2, we beat them. Okay, that was anticlimactic. No Jalen Brunson. That definitely, definitely hurt them. I think Jalen Brunson went to the Wizards, who didn't even make the playoffs. Um, oh, and the Toronto Raptors are in a seven-game series over here with Giannis, Chris Middleton, and Drew Holiday, and Jordan Wara. Are they going to get out of this round? They do. Ooh, they do. Oh, they dominated, too. Oh, it was dominating. DeAndre Aiden. Big game seven. If he would have had a big game seven in real life, you know what I'm saying? This video don't even exist. But hey, what it, whatever, whatever. The Utah Jazz decided to run it back, but they added Al Horford. Oh, snap. Al Horford's really good. Game one is a Phoenix Suns win by a ton. We we gave them a, a lot of work today. Game two, win. Game three, win. Are we going to sweep them? We absolutely do. But now we're going against the Clippers who are new and improved. They, they're healthy. That's what I mean. By new and improved, they're healthy. They also got Dennis Smith Jr. starting at the one. That's not ideal. Chris Paul should have a big series against Dennis Smith Jr. It's 15 to 16 for Chris Paul in game one. Game two, we lose. Okay. All right. Uh, not, not ideal, especially when you have these two players combined it for like less than 40 points. We lose that game. But we come back. We beat that. Cool. Now we go against the C's who brought it all back. Why change it up? Jason Tatum is better. Jalen Brown is better. Grant Williams is better. Robert Williams is better. But I think we're better than all of that. Phoenix Suns Nation, stand up. Game one, not game two. I, I didn't think we was going to sweep. They're too good. Game three, okay. Game four, yeah. One more. We don't blow three ones. We don't blow three ones around here. And the new addition, Pascal Siakam wins finals MVP. 
Chris Paul's trying to retire? First of all, the Utah Jazz just was super old. Look at that, 36, 35, 37. Am I in a position to tell Chris Paul one more time? Yes, I am. One more time, Chris. I said we're going to get you two, and we're going to try our best to get you two. Now, we do have some decisions to make because we have um, everybody basically on their last year to deal. Cam Johnson extension, uh, Miles Turner an extension, Jay Crowder potentially an extension, campaign. Like, we have a ton of decisions to make. So, um, let's hope that we make the right ones, I guess. We have the 30th overall pick, which is cool. So Miles Turner is willing to come back, if I, even with a little pay cut. And the reason I say he's willing to come back because he got no other offer. So what are you, what are you gonna do? Um, Jay Crowder wants more money than I'm willing to give him. This is basically the contract I wanted to give him. Then I say 15 M's after, like early in the video. This is 15 M's. We're also bringing in Kyle Anderson, hopefully, to replace the Jay Crowder minutes. Um, I don't know how much that'll actually work out, but we just needed somebody for the low to do that. Um, I need a backup point guard because we let Cam Payne walk in free agency because he just, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't bad by any means, but for $4 million, I could go get, you know, somebody else that, that can play the same role, you know, just to pl play the same role. Bring in Derrick Rose. Let's get Derrick Rose a championship, even though he'll probably regress. I'm actually not mad at this. Chris Paul only drops about one overall. Not too bad. Uh, the team isn't as good as last year for sure after losing Cam Payne and losing Jay Crowder. Uh, but I feel like we still have some wiggle room once the deadline comes around. We got to see how good or how bad we are. We're going to have some wiggle room to make some changes. Um, Chris Paul's down to an 84. Pascal is still good. Um, Book is still good. And our bench is still somewhat intact. We brought in Eric Gordon, uh, who's old now. But, hey, Chakra, he, he good. One game this season, he going to hit like five threes out of nowhere. You're going to forget that he exists. He's going to come off the bench. He's going to hit five threes, all from the logo. And Fred Van Vliet left to go to the Lakers. No LeBron. So LeBron went, okay, all right, I'm, I'm curious, I'm just curious. I know this has nothing to do with today's video, but I, I gotta go see where LeBron ended up going. The Rockets, wow, okay, well that's that's something. I don't know what the heck Houston about to do now, um, but we, we'll see. Luca, 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 keep doing your thing, my boy. I believe in you, I like you a lot, but it's just not your season. I mean, maybe it is, I don't know. I mean, I, I still believe in ourselves, you know, we are the one seed, you're the sixth seed over there, so if we see you again, we'll be in the conference finals, interesting. Um, without, I was going to say, I was looking earlier in the season and the Raptors were struggling, um, but they ended up being a two seed. So, you know, shout out to them. We got the first round is Utah. Uh, they were actually a selling team earlier in the season. I tried to get DeAndre Hunter at the deadline. He was too expensive. We're down two to one. So let's go make some changes. Ha. You got to know when it's time to make changes. And right now is the time to make changes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, who are you? Oh yeah. We signed this guy in free agency. I mean, Thanks for, for your for your at least being a decent backup, but we're we're going to a shorter man rotation. We're, we tie it 2-2. That's great. Donovan Mitchell, Devin Booker in the playoff series is kind of dope. We go up 3-2, and then we get out of there to go against OKC. Who do they have? Didn't they just have somebody last season? Is they, Was it Zach Levine? Oh, my, no, Zach Levine went to the Wiz. Bradley Beal went to the Magic. I could have sworn they had another player. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Well, whoever it is, he's gone. It's now just Josh Giddy and, and Shea Gilles Alexander, and it's a cool success story. They beat LeBron in the first round, but they can't get through Devin Booker and them. All right, this is good. Because this morning, I woke up, turned on the TV, and Patrick Beverly was talking about the Phoenix Suns and talking all kind of nonsense about Chris Paul. Maybe not nonsense. I don't know. Um, but now they get to go against each other in the first round. Spencer Dewey is now here. Now here, no D'Angelo Russell, but the rest of the team looks about the same. 1C versus 2C, they win game one. And Chris Paul put up a stinker. Uh-oh. It's Patrick Beverly right. It's Patrick Beverly right. Game two. Okay, we fight back. And Chris Paul came back a little bit better. That's bad. That's good. That's good. All right, that's great. I just realized that the Toronto Raptors got eliminated in the first round from the seventh seed. The seventh seed got all the way to the conference finals. That's Chris Dorte, Malcolm Brogdon, Jalen Smith, uh, Tyrese Halliburton, Clint Capella. They got all the way to the conference finals. Got swept by the Celtics. And now we got a good old-fashioned rematch. But instead of having Marcus Smart in the starting lineup, and instead of having Robert Williams, they got Peyton Pritchard. And Nikola Vucevic. Okay, Robert Williams is still on the team. Marcus Smart is still on the team. Uh, they just decided to run out with a different lineup. I, I mean, it's working. They were the fourth seed and got all the way to the finals. Two seven-game series to get here. But they got here. It don't matter. Will they be able to take us to seven or beat us in however many games? The answer is going to surprise you when I say no. Oh, they did take us to seven. Okay, great. Uh... <sighs> Okay, great. I mean, yeah, I knew that this was going to be a year that was a little bit more difficult than last year uh, with Chris Paul getting worse and then us losing like Jay Crowder and Cameron Payne and us not really replacing them with anybody of substance. 
But game seven, I, I saw I saw game seven for the Suns. And I saw game seven for the Celtics. And it was completely different. I need a defensive masterclass from Mikel Bridges. I need a defensive masterclass. It's close, which is good for the video. I mean, it's not really close anymore. That would have been good for the video, but not good for my, my well-being. But we get our second championship. Pascal Siakam gets his second finals MVP. That's his third ring, by the way. Pascal Siakam has turned into an all-time great, right? Three championships, two all-star appearances. Okay, maybe not. Still, I mean, no, two finals MVPs. That's nothing to sniff at. And Chris Paul did not retire. But Patrick Beverly did. Ooh, interesting, interesting. That's all, though. I promised y'all two. We went out there and get two. You're like, Kenny, why not go out for number three? Because we would have had to recite Devin Booker, Pascal, and Chris Paul. There's no, there is no way. There's, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, we were not winning a third championship, okay? We're going we're, we're gonna to live with two and move on. I appreciate you watching this video, even though my voice is bad. And, and, and I know there's a lot of cuts because I had to sneeze or I had to cough or whatever. I appreciate you watching this one. Uh, i see y'all tomorrow with another banger. We're going five days a week, Monday through Friday on this channel. That will not change. Appreciate y'all. Peace.